This is where it dwells quietly. Blending into its environment. And if any should appear to disturb its peaceful snow, they will soon find out that this mistake will cost them their lives. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, Douglas and Diggas, Monster Hunters and Monster Honeys, it is your man, Stack908, the Dig Dug himself, and today, guys, we're going to be looking at Espinas. Now, Espinas is a super cool monster. This thing is actually a super rare beast, if you will. It made its debut in Monster Hunter Frontier. That was a MMORPG or an MMO Monster Hunter game that was only available to the Eastern markets. That's like Japan and everyone else. It never made its debut and never even came across the shores to that of the Western markets because, well, you know unique exclusivity type things whatever not really tripping but the cool thing about it is that every now and then very rare occasions will a monster from that particular game cross over to the main series now the other way around happens all the time eventually like every single monster that found its way over here made its way over there but not vice versa nevertheless espinos if i'm not mistaken is the flagship monster of the entire monster in the frontier series so it's really cool that we even got to fight the monster honestly i'm not gonna hold you guys i'm not gonna pretend this exact fight you're looking at right here is the actual very first time i ever swung on an Espinoff, so that's kind of cool. I mean, it's like history in the making here. This is the first for everybody, so this is first for basically almost everyone in the West, and it's the first for myself. I have zero history when it goes to fight this thing, outside of the fact that it is an old monster in a new game. I don't, that, that's, a, that's a rare thing. I've played every monster in a game up until this one. I've never fought this thing before, except second generation. Didn't play the second generation. Nevertheless, let's talk about this Espinoff. Espinoff is a very unique monster. I'm gonna get this out of the way first because it's incredibly important to note. Espinos has a very, 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 very unique thing about it, and that includes its fireball, or that's rather its fireball. Now, its fireball is a little bit more than a standard fireball. Its fireball is very unique. It has three elements to it. Fire, poison, and paralysis. You can get hit with this fireball and get hit with all three. Like, literally, you'll get hit with the fireball and you're laying on the ground, completely crippled, unable to do anything because you're paralyzed and poisoned and you have fire blight. Now, one thing to note, I'm gonna get this out the way first. I bet you guys are thinking, yo, Dak, what the heck? That sounds crazy. I mean, it does sound crazy and it's pretty crazy. The poison and the fire blight do not last very long. One small caveat, had it actually lasted very long, a lot of players would be in a lot of trouble. Honestly, there's a lot of cases where you yourself can be poisoned and fire blitten or whatever, and you'll fight the monster like maybe 10 or so seconds and it just wears off. Whereas normal poison lasts a lot longer. So it's just one small like caveat to the fact that it's particular breath is a little OP. For the most part, if you get caught with the fire breath, it's almost always gonna have enough time to come back and like capitalize on your mistake by getting hit by the fireball. But again, of course, like I said, it's never too, too crazy. It didn't, have, it didn't last super, super, super long. Uh, and you can walk your way out of it. Uh, speaking of walking away, if it shoots a fireball and it hits the ground, it leaves like some smoke and like some fire and stuff on the ground. If you walk into that smoke and fire whatnot on the ground, you get hit with everything minus the paralysis. In order for the paralysis to actually take effect, it must actually connect. So with its unique fireball out the way, let's talk about its unique body physiology. So this monster is another very interesting monster, a pretty rare monster in this particular case. Whenever this monster gets pissed off, its body changes. When his body changes, his hit zones open up. Because other than that, his hit zones are pretty rock hard, rock solid, if you will. Defenses are kind of high. But when it gets really mad, veins appear over its body, over its wings and everything. You'll see it in the video and you can see it when you go to fight it yourself. That's when it's the most susceptible to basically all forms of attack. Mind, if you want to bring the elemental thing that's going to slap it the most, you're going to have to bring that ice. You're going to have to bring that Luna Garon. I keep mentioning it. I keep mentioning it. Luna Garon. Those weapons are godlike. Okay, bring that, slap this thing, you'll do fine. Again, moving back to the red veins on his body and whatnot, that's when you're going to do your absolute most damage. Uh, if anything, if you guys can come up with a particular nice combo suit, so that way it actually stays in this particular state for a long time and does a lot of nothing, will help you out. And my luck in playthroughs, whenever it charges, because it will charge a lot, just hit it with a flash bomb. Just, yeah, just hit it with a flash bomb. It'll stop. It'll stand right there. It's still pissed off. You can just beat the heck out of it. That's what I do. Well, that's what I did because I had to fight this thing 16 times to get the mantle loose. That was kind of rough. But yeah, outside of that, those are the unique things about it. It has a very unique fireball that actually can uh, burn you, poison you, and hit you with paralysis all at the same time. It has the unique armoring ability of its body and whatnot. 
Um, last but not least, let's talk about the fireballs again briefly. The fireballs are very akin to two monsters. It, it's akin to that of Raytheon and Yongaruga. Honestly, a lot of the characteristics that this monster has reminds me of Raytheon, Yongaruga, and to a lesser extent, Gypseros. Uh, for those who don't know who Gypseros is, don't worry about it. He's a little, what is he, like a tier one? He's, like a, oh, he's probably a tier two. He's probably a tier two flying bird wyvern, rather, who no one likes, but he has a couple of awkward little things about him that make him, for some people, cute, but for others, really annoying. But for the most part, just understand that he has um, a neat way of standing up and d spitting things. And in this case, Espinosa has a uh, way of standing up and shooting down his fireball. But it combos that with the way the young Ruga shoots his fireball, which is shotgunning them all on the ground in front of you. Nevertheless, that's the cool thing about the Espinosa when it comes to his fireballs and it's and everything else. Uh, as far as the other attacks it has, I'm going to keep it a buck 50, guys. Remember when I said it feels a lot like the Raytheon? Well, that's its contribution. If you guys have fought a Raytheon at all, you're going to feel very familiar when fighting this monster outside of the unique things I mentioned. Because the unique things are, well, for the most part, unique to it. But other than that, it very much feels like a Raytheon. It feels a lot like a Raytheon. It charges like a Raytheon. Not exactly, but the charge is very akin to the other Raytheon. The tail swipes. The tail, well, the, the mouth bites. The mouth bites? What? You know what I'm trying to get at. Like, basically, all the other smaller attacks, lesser attacks, are that of, like, a Raytheon. You know what I mean? Um, there's not very many other things I can actually mention that's quite unique to it that you really need to worry about. So, yeah, just go crazy. If you fought a Raytheon before, you can fight this guy. Um, but, yeah, outside of that, let's talk about the gear because the gear is... It's something worth talking about, for sure. That's... Yeah, something worth talking about. Okay, so it's gear. Let's talk about it really brief like. So let's get this out of the way first. Uh, it has paralysis attack three, poison attack three, and foray three. Now these things work together because foray is what really sets them all off. Paralysis attack and poison attack, I'm sure you can figure out. It's just paralysis and poison additional points and whatnot. Not a whole lot. They kind of nerfed those particular abilities in this game, but just a little bit off the top. So it is what it is. But foray, foray is what's really sauce. So foray is very unique. What foray is, is if a monster is hit with a blight or an ailment, you will receive an attack and affinity bonus so at the rank that it is which is rank three you get like i think a flat 15 onto your attack and if, like is it 15 i think it's 15 so it's attacking like 20 affinity which is pretty good all things considered uh on top of that even has agitator so like okay check it out this is where it gets really sauce like if you just happen to poison or paralyze or blight a monster and you have agitator so let's say it's pissed off and poison or whatever you get a huge boost of attack which is pretty solid i mean i'm gonna give it to it that's where it's gonna make a lot of his cheese you know what i mean but um let's look at the other ones really quickly we're looking at part breaker three which is a 30 percent increase to monster part so great for cutting tails and breaking horns and such protective polish i ah, love this ability your weapon sharpness does not degrade for 90 seconds period you sharpen it it's maxed out you, you can hit a monster a trillion times Within 90 seconds, won't lose an inch of sharpness. Fantastic. I actually like it a lot more than uh, Razor Sharp, truth be told. Because, well, I mean, Razor Sharp is nice and everything, but, like, sharpening weapon, especially when you have the, the canines around, it takes really no time at all to do that and just whatever. Anyway, it's just my preferred, uh, el uh, not element, uh, skill in that regard. Flint tree so you don't move around when people slap across the face. Rapid fire up because, you know, gunner stuff. So, now... <sighs> With the armor out the way, I'm gonna give the armor like a solid B. I think I might I might do that now. I'm gonna grade the armors because a lot of times it's like the armors are great and sometimes they're not very good at all. This is a very solid B. You have a thing that can give you more attack, which is nice. And also little little extra gimmicks in there, you know, the paralysis and the and the poison attack and whatnot. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Now the thing to truly take away from this is that the paralysis attack is kind of sauce, but what Espinos has is actually poison. It has both poison and fire weapons. Here is the here, here's the problem, okay, guys. Here's the problem. Espinos weapons on paper are not that great, okay. I'm gonna keep it a trillion with you. It's probably not gonna be your end game fire or your end game poison weapons, simply because the Wraith and the Rathlos exist. That's correct. The Wraith and the Rathlos both exist because they exist. They almost um, make this monster's weapons not worthwhile at all. The only thing this monster's weapon has that over both Wraith and Rathlos. I believe at the very end of the tree, it has natural purple, and it has 22 affinity. Uh, the sharpness is kind of, well, as far as, like, the length on the sharpness is kind of okay. But the thing to walk away from this when it comes to both Raytheon, Rathos, and Espionos is that Raytheon is the poison. Raytheon is going to have way more poison than that of Espionos. Rathos is going to have way more fire than that of Espionos. I mean, it's not even close. Like, Espionos can have, like, 17 fire on the lance, and Rathos has, like, 45 
it's crazy so if you're looking for elemental Ooh, and maybe even element elemental if that's even a thing damage um you may want to go to the other monsters that kind of draw influence from it as opposed to this one right here however if you have a very interesting build that actually benefits from that affinity out. and you're like hey i'll tack on a little extra fire or i'll tack on a little extra poison i mean go for it they're not bad they're not terrible i mean the raw is about the same they just they they're, they're, they're different, okay? They're not terrible weapons. Ooh, they're just different. There's a particular set that someone's going to have out there that's probably going to rock an Espinos weapon. And in the other one, you know what I mean? Like, they can say, hey, if I want more fire, more Rathalos. Or, you know, I want more poison, Raytheon. But, yeah, the weapons aren't, like, amazing. If anything, I'm going to give the weapons a C. But mostly because they themselves can be used. However, they tend to be outclassed by others. But by themselves, they can work if your set works for it. All right, to do a bit of recap, Espinas is the Monster Hunter Frontier flagship monster. Very unique monster, made its introduction a long time ago. Not super long, but a while back, if anything. But it finally made its debut onto a main console game in this game. It is a flying wyvern that's very akin to that of both the Yongaruga and the Rathalos. Excuse me, the Raytheon, I apologize. The Yongaruga and the Raytheon, they have very similar attacks, very similar mannerisms, if you will. Um, they share a couple of interesting things with them and that's mostly the way in which their fireballs are um almost almost said like handed out but that's where you can't just hand out a fireball but speaking of this fireball this fireball is incredibly unique it has the exclusive traits of being both fire poison and paralysis inducing so you can get hit with one fireball and catch all three like a lot of times you'll get hit with the fireball and you can catch a fat l4 free my guy you know what i mean like you'll get hit with it and then you have to hold that and then you kind of have to hold that. I don't know how else to put it. You can get caught with the, with the slippy dippy on it. You know what I mean? Moving to the left. So outside of that, it has a very unique thing with its armor, its body, that is, where in which when it gets aggravated, angry, in rage mode, the hit zones for that monster open up a bit more, and you can do a lot more damage with the body. However, when it does that, it's going to charge and run around a lot more often. So a little bit of good, a little bit of the bad, whatever it is, kind of what it is. But at the end of the day, outside of those particular unique things for it, it has a lot of things that make it very akin to that of a Raytheon. There's a lot of things for it that aren't incredibly unique, that are truly and earnestly noteworthy outside of its particular charging pattern, the fireball, and maybe kind of the way it produces the fireball. Like, it can kind of produce the fireball in that the way of a Raytheon. It can produce the fireball in the same way as, like, a Young Ruga. And then, to a lesser extent, the Gypseros. But, um, yeah. It's because Gypseros can shoot a, a ball of poison to the left to the right and to the front of you uh all while, all while standing up on its hind legs and shooting kind of like an outward arc it can do the same thing but nevertheless that's espionage everyone thanks so much for watching i really wanted to get this video a lot sooner than this because um i don't know i just want to get these things out sooner but a lot of weird stuff happened to me in my life weird stuff is still happening to me actually um but it's, it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay i want to get as many videos out as fast as i can i'm still trying to do so some things have slowed me down but we're gonna keep trugging along shooting out as many videos a week um as i can it's just getting a really it's becoming a really busy point at work for me making it to where i can't really come home and just kind of work on it they're calling me back in and i'm staying late i'm getting really tired i don't want to you know sit down and make a bunch of videos and i'm tired you feel me so um this week might be a little slower i want to get at least three um so here's one today there'll probably be one the following day which is gore magala and the one after that i can't remember the spider lady thing yeah that's it actually that that one might might be a, a couple of days uh back that one might be like a friday kind of affair because i need to figure out how it fights a little bit better because honestly i'm not gonna hold you guys that is a very weird fight for me so yeah anyway enough of the talking after the end of the actual video you guys have a wonderful day it's been your boy dak 908 aka the dig dug himself the desire sense of forever being your favor um if you guys like the way i'm making these videos let me know something if you like the video or learned anything could you give the video a like if you did not like the video or did not learn anything in the video go ahead and give the video a dislike this is a way i'm going to be using now so that way i can say okay people like the way i'm doing what i'm doing versus they're not liking it i should change it up so let me know what you guys think anyway it's been your boy take care the design center your favor and all the good stuff